Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today we're taking a look at some of the hardest working pocket knives that you can get your hands on right now for less than 50 bucks. Let's check them out. Now the knives here are designed to get down and dirty. We're talking more than just like opening the mail or opening your latest box from online shopping. These are knives, whether you take them to a demanding job site or off the beaten path, you're going to be able to push them pretty hard. And you're not even going to feel guilty about it since they are so inexpensive in the first place. Now, first up, we've got to talk about the Ontario Rat 1 and the closely related SE Avispa, which is just you can kind of think of it as a, uh, a frame locking variant of the Ontario. Both great knives, but the Ontario especially has kind of long been considered one of the most no nonsense foolproof buys that you can get under that $50 mark. And you can get it with OS 8 for a little less money or for still just 40 bucks, you can get them with a hardworking D2 blade like this. And that's a tool steel that's going to hold an edge a good long time. It's not a, not a completely stainless steel, but if you're looking for the most edge retention under 50 bucks, good bet is going to be to look at the D2 steel knives out there. Now, the reason this Ontario has been so popular for so long, you've got an excellent blade shape, about 3.6 inches long, full flat grind, versatile drop point. It's going to slice well. It's thick enough. It's not super thick, but it's thick enough that it's going to be able to stand up to some rougher abuse. And then the handles, you've got injection molded material over a full liner lock, dual liners, uh, both sides, in fact. So you've got a little bit of girth to hold on to as well. And that handle comfort is important on a knife that you are going to be pushing, you know, a little bit harder than you might some smaller knives. The other thing about this handle, in addition to the thickness is you've got a good amount of length for even bigger hands. And it's a type of shape that even if your hands are a little bigger than the handle, or even maybe if you're wearing a heavy pair of work gloves that kind of gap you out a little bit, you're going to be able to hang off the back end with your pinky without, you know, losing a solid grip on this knife. On the subject of that solid grip, the jimping here on the thumb ramp is nice and aggressive, not sharp, but you've got a wide serration pattern. So again, even in a heavier pair of work gloves, you've got solid traction there too. Now, if you like the shape of the rat, but you want a thinner handle, you know, like I said, there are some advantages to that thick handle, but if you want something that's a bit more slim in the pocket, check out that Avispa. Like I said, a little bit slimmer. You've got the security of the frame lock there. Everything else is almost the same four position pocket clip, the jimping, not quite as aggressive. And you've got a little bit more of a drop to the drop point blade itself, but otherwise very similar. D2 versions of this are about 38 bucks. Uh, at less, you can also get an OS 8 version just like that Ontario. So you've got that stainless option. There's also an SK5 blade option. So even tougher uh, if that's what you're going for. Not quite as much uh, corrosion resistance or edge holding as the D2 here. But again, something you're going to be able to push really hard. But on the subject of rust resistance, like I said, D2, not completely stainless, but you do have a black coating on this version right here to help with that a little bit. You can get that on some of the Ontario D2 versions as well. Now, one of the only real downsides to me with the Ontario Rat 1 is it's such a good thing at what it does that it tends to overshadow something else in Ontario's lineup that also makes a fantastic affordable workhorse. And that's the Utilitac 2 designed by Joe Pardue. Regular price on this is just about 30 bucks. With that, OS 8 blade again, three and a half inches. And you do have a little bit of a recurve going on here at the back, which for one thing, it does add a little bit of edge to any given blade length, but also it adds a little more aggression on the pull cuts. When you're uh, drawing back towards yourself, you're going to engage a little bit more of that edge than you would if it were straight. Speaking of that more aggressive angle to the recurve, you've also got a more aggressive angle to the blade itself. It points down a little bit more and you're just going to feel just a little bit more powerful on some of those heavier cuts. Likewise on the handles, we've got dual liners with that liner lock there and injection molded scales. Although that, uh, that Avispa did have a, a G10 front scale, which is nice, but you do get more traction than the, uh, the rat one with the util attack because of these extra grooves right here, which some folks are going to appreciate very much. As for the rest of the handle, it's a little bit blockier than the, uh, than the rat one in terms of its shape, still nice and comfortable, a little bit less of a, uh, a finger guard integrated. You do have a little bit, but it's a little more gentle. So when you're 
leading into a cut or doing any kind of piercing, we be a little more careful with this one than you would with these other guys, but it shouldn't be a major concern. All right, now that we've kind of gotten the, uh, the Ontario shaped elephant in the room talked about, have some other options now, a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact, but still very hardworking and we'll work our way up. First is from Kershaw, one of their Emerson collaborations. This is the CQC 7K. Now you're not gonna find a D2 blade on this knife at the under $50 price point. This one here comes in about 45, uh, but you can get D2 on some of the Emerson collabs with Kershaw, but they're gonna come in above that price point. But the whole knife here is just as solid as can be. About a three and a quarter inch blade on this one, and you've got the Tonto profile, which isn't just for, uh, for the tactical-minded folks out there. Because of that leading edge, you can actually use it a little bit for some chisel-like tasks, which is gonna come in handy in some certain job site scenarios. Even if, like this one, it's not a completely straight leading edge, you do have just a hint of curvature to that leading edge. The steel here is an HCR13 MOV, so the HCR series steel, essentially analogous to the OS 8 that we found on these previous knives here. Again, we've got a frame lock on this guy, like that Avispa. One of the nice things about that over something like a liner lock is the harder you grip it, it's only gonna reinforce the locking action of that lock bar. Certainly well enough on its own, but a little more never hurts. Now the finger guard on this particular knife, I really like the way it's executed. You've got a nice aggressive scoop out for that index finger. It's gonna lock things in very nicely and it's large enough for bigger fingers or a gloved hand. It's gonna give some good protection. Now, speaking of a gloved hand, this knife, because of its Emerson DNA, has some advantages when it comes to opening the knife, especially if you are wearing that gloved hand. First and foremost, you've got the signature ambidextrous thumb disc mounted on the spine right there. Either side's gonna work just fine, either hand, I should say, and it's gonna be very easy, even in a heavy work glove, to find that and rotate that open. It's not really gonna be a slippy thumb stud, which could maybe be the case on something like that Rat 1 in certain scenarios, but you've got a lot of traction and positive action when you open with this thumb disc. In addition to that, you've also got the Emerson Wave, that signature pocket deployer. So all you have to do is grab the knife and rotate it backwards as you pull it from the pocket. It'll catch that hook and open that blade right up. Now, one of the things I appreciate about these four knives we've looked at so far is the pivots in them are based around washers. Now, a lot of folks prefer bearings these days because you get a nice free-floating springy action, but the advantage of the washer construction is a little bit less susceptible to things like dust or grit, grime, that sort of thing, which you might encounter on a heavier job site. But if you do want a, uh, a harder working bearing-based knife, I do have two here that I think are definitely worth taking a look at. And the first is the Revo Recoil. Kind of a little bit of a uh, odd looking duck, but a very serious, hardworking, utility-minded shape going on here for a price of about 45 bucks. For that, you're getting a 9CR series stainless blade, which is roughly like 440C and should have more edge retention than the 8CR blade we just looked at. Length on this one, just over three inches, and it's got this very aggressive downward cant to the angle and really is gonna work very well on some of those heavier cuts. And especially on things where you might need to be dragging the tip on a pull cut, whether you're scoring through something, working on a, uh, a piece of wood, anything like that, this is gonna be a very nice tool for doing that sort of thing. And just like that Emerson we looked at, it also has a nice consideration for a work gloved hand in the actual thumb studs here, which is essentially a thumb plate on either side with a little bit of a concave dish in the center. So nice and easy to find and very easy to actuate. Another thing to note, kind of like the Utilitac, the, uh, the finger guard here uh, is even less so, but we do at least have a little bit of jimping here on the, uh, the heel edge of the blade. But again, keep that in mind as you're using it. Handles, we've got stainless steel on the back with that frame lock there. Nice G10 on the front, but there are some aluminum versions available, even an assisted opening version available too. Last thing I'll say about this knife is the blade finish. We've seen some satin, we've seen some black coated, but the stone washed finish on this guy, to me, is the true like hard working knife finish because it really is gonna help hide scratches as you use it. So it's gonna keep your tool looking fresher longer, which it's just an aesthetic thing. It shouldn't matter too much, but 
let's be honest, it is kind of nice when you have that sort of thing work out. You see that a little bit on that Kershaw as well on the hollow ground portions and before it moves to the satin grinds on the top. All right, one more ball bearing base knife before we go back to some washer construction and that's the CJRB Tala, which looks a little bit out there, but there is some serious hardworking pedigree on this knife too. Just like kind of that recoil that we just looked at. Same color too, in this fact, with the G10. With this guy, you've got a D2 blade, three and a half, just under three and a half inches. And even though the spine has a little bit of a fanciful treatment to it, this is a hardworking Warncliffe blade through and through. D2 steel, stone wash finish as well. Nice, acute point. It's gonna feel really powerful going through some cuts. One more advantage of that stone wash finish, especially on something like D2 steel, it's very different from a bead blasted finish, which tends to open up the pores on the surface of the steel. As, you, as this is tumbled in the stone washing medium, it's essentially closing those pores up. It's almost like a random pattern mirror polish in a way. So that is gonna aid a little bit in the corrosion resistance, not as much as a coating of course, but every little bit helps for sure. The handles on this guy are really nice. G10, like I said, a little bit of contour for comfort and a fairly aggressive texture on this particular handle. That can definitely come in handy at a job site, especially when things are wet. You might not be able to stop for the weather. You need to keep going. So this is definitely going to help. And it is aggressive enough that it's gonna work in those pairs of work gloves as well. Again, we've got dual full length liners on this guy with a liner lock. And like I said before, ball bearings in the pivot on this guy. And you have a flipper as well, rather than a thumb stud or something else. So you're gonna be able to get some really nice and quick action. And perhaps even more impressive than some of those premium features like the ball bearings and the contoured handles is the price. Just about 38 bucks on this guy. So these next two knives are gonna have some nice traction as well, similar to that Tala, just in a different way. And first, of course, is the Spyderco Tenacious Lightweight. New versions of this, the lightweight versions, come with FRN, and you've got their nice bi-directional texturing on the handles. Kind of a signature Spyderco element that offers a lot of traction in those wet and grimy situations. Of course, if you do want something like G10 on this design, it is available, but they have crept up above the $50 mark in the, uh, the last little bit of time. Thankfully, you can still get this one under there, and Honestly, I'm not sure whether I, uh, I prefer this or the G10 version. I've got a G10 version myself at home, but I like the vibes of this knife in the FRN too, I have to admit. Full length liners, liner lock, washer in the pivot again, rather than ball bearings, four position pocket clip as well. And it's just got a nicely executed handle shape. Not as large as some of these guys out here, but certainly large enough. Blade steel on this guy, 8CR series stainless, about 3.4 inches. Nice working profile with that full flat grind, not too thin or thick, kind of just right. And a little bit more versatile shape than some of the, uh, the Warncliffe style blades we just looked at. Now you can get this in a black or a satin finish. You can even upgrade it to an S35 VN blade as well, but definitely a little bit more expensive than the uh, $50 ceiling for this video but at least you can still get these FRN versions for under 50. They start at about 45 bucks, depending on which version you get. All right, one more knife now that kind of focuses a lot on the traction provided by the handle. We've got the new, newly released Cold Steel Range Boss series, which is kind of a, uh, a less expensive version of their Broken Skull series, which had some more premium materials. Now, kind of like the Avispa we looked at near the beginning, this is one where they also are prioritizing slimness in the handle. So if you want like a full hand filling grip, this is not gonna be for you. But if you want a lot of blade length and a very slim pocket carry, definitely check this guy out. That blade itself is about four inches long. You've got a 4034 basic stainless steel, nice heavy stone wash finish on this guy as well. And you can clearly see kind of that classic I'll say it, the Buck 110 Folding Hunter DNA in here. And actually that Buck 110 would fit in well in this video. It's, it's kind of a deceptively hardworking knife for the price, made in America too, but the only reason I didn't show it is I've been showing it a lot lately in some other videos. So you'll just have to use your imagination. Back to the handles on this knife, you've got a nice aggressive orange peel texture going on on these guys. Uh, not a reversible thumb stud, but there is a second thumb stud included, so this will work on the right or the left hand side. 
Same thing with the lock, which is Cold Steel's Triad Lock. It's not just a, a simple lock back that they put in here. They put kind of their premier locking mechanism in their affordably priced hardworking folders. Now the advantage of that Triad Lock, in addition to being incredibly strong, one of the strongest on the market is it's also gonna last a good long time as well, since kind of the internal parts are self-adjusting with time. So you've got the advantage of all that strength with the convenience of easy one hand opening all coming in for just about 44 bucks. All right, if you'd rather not go with the slim handle, you want something a little chunkier in feel, kind of like some of the, uh, the earlier knives we looked at, we'll get a few more now and we'll start working up in size to some of the truly big options in this category. First is from Real Steel. This is the H6 Blue Sheep and it comes in just over 47 bucks. Blade on this guy, not quite four inches like that cold steel, but three and three quarters, a little bit thicker. We don't have a full flat grind here. We have a high flat, kind of a, a just over mid height flat grind. So a little bit more strength and rigidity in the blade stock at the sacrifice of a little bit of slicing capability, but it's still gonna work very well, especially since they swedged the back spine. So you're gonna remove a little bit of drag when going through a cut on that side. Like a couple of these other knives, like that Ontario, even that cold steel we just looked at, this is a great kind of do it all drop point shape. It's gonna work well in the job environment. It's gonna work well as kind of a folding survival knife as well. You've got the right kind of shape that's gonna work in a broad range of environments. You've also got nice large thumb studs here as well. So it's gonna be very easy to find those with a gloved hand and open them very easily. Blade steel itself, we've got 14C28N from Sandvik. It's a Swedish steel. It's gonna hold a really nice edge, very easy to maintain. And it's also a good amount of toughness, especially for a stainless steel, which is gonna be a very appreciated thing in a roughly handled knife. The handle also kind of reinforces that tough feel. Dual full liners, liner lock, like we've seen you know, a few times so far. It's just a solid kind of concept for this style of knife. On top of that, we've got a G10, not quite as a, aggressive a texture as we just looked at, but enough there to work nicely and a nice long G10 backspacer as well. So you've got really solid kind of mate up between the two sides, feels very strong. Next up, one more Emerson and I actually made a little bit of a mistake. This one is $52, but I still wanted to talk about it. This is the CQC 9K, 3.6 inch blade, Likewise, from the previous one, you've got the Emerson Wave and the thumb plate. Like the Utilitac, you've also got a little bit of a recurve. It's gonna work really nicely on some of those more aggressive and some of those pull cuts. But the handle itself is something I really enjoy about this. You do have a frame lock on the back and G10 on the front, but the way kind of the thumb ramp and the finger guard are handled, you really can put a fair amount of pressure onto them. I mean, you can see where that wave kind of mates up and integrates with the G10 and with the rest of the handle itself. So rather than something like, for example, the Spyderco, where your thumb ramp is just the blade, here you've got a much wider contact patch. So you can really push with your thumb with more comfort than you could with one of those other designs. And you've just got a big, solid knife to back up that excellent feeling. All right, to round things out, we're gonna take a look at two of kind of the classic big knives in this price range. And the first is from CRKT with their M16 14Z coming in just under 50 bucks. We've got a roughly four inch blade here, Aus 8 stainless steel, has a little bit of that bead blasted finish I mentioned earlier when talking about the uh, differences between this and the stonewash. And you've got that Tonto profile here as well. So you get a little bit of that chiseling action. And you've got some partial serrations here, which aren't my thing in particular, but they do have their uses certainly on some of the harder use knives out there for sure. Again, full liners, injection molded scales on either side, a little bit smooth, but you do have this series of holes, which gives you more surface area and gives a place, especially for me anyway, where my fingertips can kind of wedge in there and get a good amount of traction despite being not a heavily textured handle. One of the other things that's kind of good on a hard use knife like this is you've got not one, but two locks going on. You've got your standard liner lock and you've also got their auto locks system, L-A-W-K-S, which is this little tab right here that engages automatically. You don't have to think about it. It does make closing the knife a little more tricky because you have to pull that back as you disengage the liner lock, 
but you've got just more. Like I said, one is good, two is always nice as well. This is also the only other flipper we've got on this list, even though it's not a, a ball bearing based pivot, it still flips quite nicely. You can also use those thumb studs if you prefer that, but it's gonna flip open real easy. And like you saw right there, that locks button or that locks tab shifted forward right away. Don't even have to think about it. And last but not least, and actually it's the largest knife on the table, but it's also the least expensive knife on the table, the Cold Steel Pocket Bushman has to be mentioned. A lot of strength in this design and it only comes in about $27. Now the reason for the strength lies in the handle of this knife. So I'll get to that second. We'll talk about the blade first. Four and a half inches, a basic stainless steel here. You've got 4116, nice stone washed finish, excellently finished edge, versatile blade shape. You've got the clip point here rather than the drop point, but still it's going to work for a broad variety of things from the urban environments to the jungles out there and thumb stud, which is reversible. So you, you work for uh, left or right handers just as easily reversible pocket clip as well. But the strength in the handle is really worthy of note. First off, you've got essentially a stamped steel handle that wraps around the back. So you have an integral handle. It's not milled out. It is folded, but you get a lot of strength from that and you get a pretty comfortable feel around there as well, which is hard to pull off on a lot of folders. Now you don't get kind of that same comfort here on the leading edge because you know, the folder still has to have an open edge there, but the back feels very nice. You've also got that nice aggressive finger guard here and it keeps your hand pretty far away from the edge, which in most holds is going to be great, but you can choke up on it if you need to, if you're, you know, doing some smaller detail work, that's something that you can say about that Ontario we looked at up top as well. The second part of this handle strength comes in the Ram lock here at the back designed by Andrew Demko. This is actually kind of a predecessor to the shark lock he invented, which is all the rage right now. Not, uh, not identical, don't get me wrong, but there is a little bit of uh, shared DNA in the evolution of that lock from this guy right here. Now the advantage of this lock, like I said, is strength. You've got this bar running the length of the handle mating up with the back of the chain here, but the downside is this is definitely a two hand unlocking and closing knife. Essentially you pull on the lanyard here at the back. So don't cut that off or it's going to be very hard to unlock. You pull that lock out like you can see and then close the rest of the way. Opening it is just as easy as any other thumb stud equipped knife. You just open it. But like I said, the unlocking takes a little bit more care, but the trade off is an incredibly strong knife for a pretty incredibly low price. Well, that is it for my list of the best hardworking workhorse knives you can get for under 50 bucks right now. A little bit on the, uh, the larger side, even the more compact ones here. If you're looking for something a little bit smaller, say around that three inch length, uh, stuff like the QSP Penguin almost made this list. Uh, the Civivi Mini Mastodon as well, or the Mini Bull Mastiff would be a, a pretty good option. But all of these are really going to be a pretty good option. Let me know your favorites down in the comments, or if you have an alternative that didn't make this list, I would love to hear that as well. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for the Knife Rewards program, because if you're going to spend your money on one of these knives today, might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.